Welcome to the greatest day in the history of the universe. In this video, I am going to help you to identify the structure of the four macromolecules that we study in biology. We're going to start out by looking at carbohydrates. And there's a few things we want to know about carbs. Usually they're going to be in some type of ring structure. Um, and if they're not in a ring, they're going to be in a one to one ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen and these are the only elements that you're going to find in carbs and that's going to help us to identify them. Here we have a couple of examples of <clears throat> carbohydrates so I want to bring your attention first to uh, the one here on top and this is uh, glucose and it is in a ring structure so if you look at it it makes this nice hexagon shape. Um, not all single sugars or monosaccharides are going to make a hexagon uh, if it's a five carbon sugar, it'll be a pentagon, but um, they are going to be in the shape of a ring. So if you see a structure like this and it only has carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, it is definitely a carbohydrate. Next, we're going to look at actually the exact same molecule down here on the bottom. This is also glucose, but it is in what we call the linear form, which means instead of being in a ring like up here, it's in a line. And you might get this confused with lipid, but if you count, you will see that we have a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. So I'm just going to count up here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons. So that's going to be C6. And then we have um, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six oxygens, so that's O6, and if we count the hydrogens, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <clears throat> eleven, twelve. And so we have H12. So that is in a one to two to one ratio. For every one carbon, we have twice as many hydrogen, and we have the same number of oxygens. Some more ways that we might see carbs is we might see two monosaccharides put together. Um, like we see down here, we have glucose and we have fructose, which are put together to make sucrose, and that is table sugar, and that is what we call a disaccharide, but we can obviously see we have these ring structures here, and we only have the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, another thing we might see when we're seeing carbs is this up here on the top. This is a polysaccharide. Notice it has more than three monosaccharides bonded together. In this case we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got seven stuck together and so that's going to be a polysaccharide and that is a starch which is also a type of carbohydrate. The next macromolecule we're going to talk about is lipids and usually lipids are going to exist in chains of carbon. So for example we'll have several carbons bonded to each other and at the end we'll have a carboxyl group like so and that's going to be a fatty acid. Some lipids will be in that classic E shape, which is going to be what we call a triglyceride. And these are really going to be the common forms of lipids that we're going to see. So here we actually see some chains, some fatty acids. And on the top we have a saturated fatty acid because, if you'll notice, we have the maximum number of hydrogens that we can possibly have um, bound to these carbons and there are no double bonds. Um, on the bottom we have an unsaturated and we have a double bond here and so that's what we would call a mono unsaturated fat. But we can easily identify that this is a lipid because it only has the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It is not in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio and it is quite obviously um, in a chain. It's basically one big chain of uh, carbons and hydrogens, and it has this carboxyl group on the end. Here we have that classic shape of the letter E for a triglyceride, and as you can see, this molecule is made up of a glycerol backbone, and it's also made up of three fatty acid tails, and one of them happens to be unsaturated, and the other is saturated. So if you see this nice E-shaped molecule with these fatty acid chains on it, you know that's a triglyceride, and a triglyceride is a lipid. The next macromolecule we're going to identify is a nucleic acid, and we have two types of those. We have DNA, and we have RNA. And what we're going to be looking for is the elements that are 
that make up DNA and RNA, and those are going to be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, um, and phosphorus. And in particular, we're going to look for two shapes. We're going to look of the shape of the monomer of a nucleic acid, which is a nucleotide. And then we are also going to look for that classic double helix shape of DNA. The key element we want to look for when we're trying to identify a nucleic acid is the phosphorus because we're going to have this phosphate group. So this is a nucleotide that we're looking at and it has three parts. It has a phosphate group, it has a five carbon sugar, and it has a nitrogenous base. So if you see those three parts, in particular if you see this phosphate group, that's going to tell you that you have a nucleic acid. This is the nucleotide which is the monomer of nucleic acids. We also might sometimes see that classic shape of DNA, the double helix, and if you look at it, it looks kind of like a ladder that has been twisted. And it's made up of nucleotides, and we talked about how nucleotide has three basic parts. Nucleotides have that phosphate group, they have a five carbon sugar, and they have a nitrogenous base. Well, these things here in the middle, this green and yellow and red and orange, those are the um, nitrogenous bases, and those are adenine, which bonds <clears throat> with thymine, and then guanine and cytosine. So if you see that classic twisted ladder shape, you know that's DNA, and you know that's a nucleic acid. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is the last one, and that's proteins. And this one uh, tends to give people a little bit of trouble. But there's two things we can look for. One thing is uh, that we can look for is an amino acid. Now, an amino acid is not a protein. An amino acid is the building block of a protein. It is the monomer, the single unit that makes up proteins. Um, and we can also look for the shape of a protein itself, which we're going to see is actually kind of um, globular. It's kind of shaped like a glob or a, or a blob kind of shape. And I'm going to show you what we mean by that. Although it does have those shapes we talked about in class, the alpha helix, and it also has the beta sheets. Um, that we can see and those are going to be things that are going to help us to identify proteins. So let's start by looking at this amino acid and the first thing we need to notice is we have two groups that are always going to be present in an amino acid. We have this nitrogen with two hydrogens or an amino group and then we have this carbon that's understood to be a carbon um, double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to an OH and that is our carboxyl group so whenever we see those two groups together, we know we have an amino acid, and we know this is uh, having to do with proteins. Now, the rest of this amino acid is what we call that R group, and that thing changes from amino acid to amino acid. Here we have a chart of several amino acids, and in each amino acid we have the same three components. We have this amino group, we have a carboxyl group on the end, see that's present in all of these. Um, but the only thing that changes from group to group is this R group, this extra group that's highlighted here in green. And having different R groups is going to give us different amino acids. So alanine will have this R group, isoleucine will have this one, leucine will have this one, and so forth and so on. We can also look for the shape of a protein itself. If uh, we're not just given an amino acid, sometimes we'll be given a whole protein, and a protein is usually going to look kind of like a glob in shape. Uh, proteins are made up of a string of amino acids, that's our primary structure, and then that primary structure gets folded into secondary structures like beta sheets and alpha helices, and then those come together to form the tertiary structure, and then usually several tertiary proteins will actually come together to make the quaternary structure. So if we see something that's shaped kind of like a glob, that's usually going to be an indication that we have a protein. So a real quick methodology that can help you to identify these is first ask yourself, does this molecule contain nitrogen? If the answer is no, it does not contain nitrogen, then we either have a carb or we have a lipid. If we have a carb, we should either see a 1 to 1 ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen, or we should see some type of ring structure. If we have a lipid, it should be in a chain of carbons, and it should have a carboxyl group on the end, and it is not going to be 
in a one-to-one -one ratio? If the answer is yes, we do have nitrogen present, then it's either going to be a protein or it's going to be a nucleic acid. If it's a protein, we should see, if it's amino acid, we should see this NH2 group that we always want to look for. If it's a nucleic acid, we should always see this phosphate group. So we should have that phosphorus there.